Hey, um, so I've come across a video that was posted on a debate forum, uh, the British and Global Muslims for Secular Democracy, which is a group I've been in for years. It's a group that, uh, very broadly speaking, supports secular values and um, opposes Islamism as a con as a concept, as an idea. Check out the Facebook page if uh, if you want to see what I mean. Um, so yeah, the the post basically was a video from Egypt. Uh, I don't know exactly when it's from. I've seen it before. It's been floating around the internet for a while now. Um, I'm guessing it. Just looking at the quality, it's probably around the mid two thousands. It might be. It might be earlier. I'm guessing it's from the two thousands anyway. Uh, but basically, it involves um, an atheist guy, Muhammad Hashim, a young guy uh, who very bravely. Him on this TV show, this is in Egypt, right, a conservative Islamic country, and um, basically openly said he was an atheist and explained why. So um, there was another guest, um, a sheikh, um, I'm just going to get some of the names here and apologies if I mispronounce anything. Um, let's see. The host is uh, Mahmoud Abd al-Halim. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, A-B-D, it's Mahmoud Abd Al-Halim. Um, and the Sheikh is, uh, Sheikh, let's see, try to get the guy's name. Just bear with me a second. But basically this exchange, I think, says a lot about the lack of tolerance within Islam. And I think it has to be said, I think, you know, it's... Uh, Staggering. I, anyway, I can't get the Sheikh's name right now. I'm just scrolling through the video to to pronounce it correctly. But the point is, um, as soon as he said he was an atheist, it was like you know, lighting a stick of dynamite. The host absolutely went hysterical. He said, "How can you say that? Who made you?" And his voice started raising. Um, there was translations. Obviously, they were speaking in um, Arabic or Egyptian, uh, but basically. Um, you know, the guy was getting hysterical. He said, who made you? I apologize to my viewers. This is blasphemy. Uh, we cannot have people imposing um, blasphemy and promoting blasphemy. Um, in fact, the exact words were, um, what was it? Promoting, uh, I'm sad to say, we cannot promote such destructive ideas. You have not uttered a single convincing word, not that you barely let him get a word in. Yeah, the Sheikh Mahmoud Ashur, Deputy Sheikh of Al Azhar. Uh, he's actually not getting angry, but he's basically dismissing it. Many young people today have a mental deficiency. Um, and the host uh, is saying, Have you seen a psychiatrist? I advise you to leave the studio and go straight to a psychiatric hospital. Um, you shouldn't be here. I cannot let you be here anymore. Please get up and leave, and I will continue the show with Dr. Mahmoud. Um, your ideas are destructive and bad for Egyptian youth. You set a very bad example. No, that's... Uh, <laughs> if you look at the video, you'll see how hysterical this is. Here's the crazy thing. They made him leave the show, and I understand he had to leave Egypt eventually. But that's actually relatively moderate compared to what might happen in, say, rural Pakistan, where an atheist would be killed on the spot. In all likelihood, that's not hyperbole when you look at what's happened in rural Pakistan over the years and even increasingly in the cities. Uh, a notorious example is Mashal Khan, a student who was beaten to death uh, for supposed blasphemy because he expressed some atheistic ideas um, in the University of Mardan in 2017, beaten to death by a mob. And, you know, there were Pakistanis at the time saying, oh, it was terrible, they shouldn't have done that. He should have been tried in a court of law. Um, Islam is definitely, definitely behind Western liberal democracies when it comes to tolerance. There is absolutely no question about that. No question at all. Uh, now, before people say I'm sort of generalizing here, I'm well aware that there are many young Egyptians who are liberal minded, atheist, uh, Christian, secular and so on. Um, so, like I say, this video might be a few years old now, it might be pre-Egyptian revolution.
Nevertheless, there is still a strong um, Islamist contingent within Egypt, Egyptian society. Uh, and I'm not talking about the Muslim Brotherhood. I'm talking about, uh, you know, look at Sisi. Look at uh, leaders like Sisi and Imran Khan and others, uh, Richard Berdouan, uh, the way they ambassadored President Macron when he defended French freedom of speech, when that schoolgirl was threatened by Islamists. Um, you know, there's some controversy around the term clash of civilizations because it's kind of generalizing and it polarizes all of one people against another. I, I don't entirely endorse the term because I think it polarizes both Pakistanis, Egyptians and so on, uh, Iranian too, who are trying to make change. But the problem is, um, it's undeniable that in countries like Egypt, Iran, uh, increasingly Turkey, and increasingly, unfortunately, Indonesia and Malaysia, which had long been held up as examples of moderate Islam, um, we see this sort of intolerance. I mean, th this is a hysterical reaction. And it shows a hypersensitivity of Islam. Uh, any Muslims watching this, I would ask you to explain that. You know, if Islam is so wonderful, then why does it get so hypersensitive with any anyone who expresses a different point of view? You know, if atheism is so wrong, and I'm not an atheist, you know, I don't agree with everything atheists say, but if, if atheists are wrong, then why not just calmly debate why not just calmly say well i don't agree with your idea and counter it and you know have a debate but this hysterical reaction throwing the guy off the show simply for having a different point of view that's a good example of how insensitive and intolerant islam is and you know to those people who are politically correct and say oh you can't offend the faith i i really think that's pathetic i think um in in our society, we need to be absolutely crystal clear that that mentality has no place. Uh, religionists have to accept that atheists also have their point of view. Um, and, you know, in countries like Egypt, it is dangerous to be an atheist. Egypt's not even the worst example. Um, wherever you have Islam enforced, you will have intolerance, it's guaranteed. And that's why I think we should be absolutely robust and forceful in rejecting the likes of Imran Khan and their arrogant demands. I mean, how dare any leader of any Islamic country point fingers at the West? They really need to look at their own backyard and consider the lack of tolerance that goes on there. Now, no doubt Cairo will say, well, we've taken on the Islamists, we've taken on ISIS and the Muslim Brotherhood. But there is still fundamental attitudes in society. And I think in a country like Egypt, which is pretty urbanized, and there is a large youthful population, there is hope. So I'm not totally in despair. I do think there is hope in a country like that. And this brave young guy, Mohammed Hashim, is a personification of that hope. And that's, um, you know, thinking outside the box. But it takes real courage to do that. And I, I massively support him. I understand he had to flee Egypt, but, you know, we need to be more outspoken, frankly, in supporting people like that. I think the British government needs to vocally speak out for minorities who are persecuted in Islamic countries. Uh, that's atheists, for sure, but also Christians and others, uh, including Islamic minority groups. The persecution is rampant, and it's very real, and it is absolutely on a different scale from anything that happened to Muslims in Western countries. So, for example, you might occasionally get a hate crime. Uh, you might even have uh, an atrocity like what happened in New Zealand. But there's a fundamental difference. The vast majority of society condemns it. You know, if you have, um, say, a terrorist attack against Christians in Pakistan or Egypt, you might get Muslims sort of condemning it and saying we're against terrorism. But they would also have no problem with the uh, persecution that's going on. So there's a contradiction there. Uh, but the fact remains, Islam has a very real problem with tolerance. It just does. And final point, uh, I'm not the bravest person in the world. You know, I wouldn't go to an Islamic country and say the things that Muhammad Hashim said because um, I don't want to be killed. That's the truth. I don't want to be killed. Maybe I'm not that brave. But I do say that in our societies, we have to not 
tolerate the intolerant. We should not tolerate Islamic dogma. And the answer is simple. Um, British Muslims can freely practice in their mosques, read the Qurans and so on. But we need to absolutely purge Islamists from this society. We need to make it clear that ideology is not welcome. That's why I'm very frustrated with the silence from senior politicians at Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson on the Batley school situation. Um, you know, we either defend our values or, or we're nothing. Simple as that. But we should not take lectures from Islamic countries. They need to concentrate on sorting out their own massive problems of human rights and persecution. Of course, it's for domestic politics. You know, someone like Imran Khan has a big Islamist base. So when he um, when he stirs things up and says, oh, the Islamophobic West, we need to condemn them and they should have blasphemy laws like we do and so on, he's obviously pitching to his base. Probably, probably in one-on-one -on -one meetings he would be more diplomatic. But I still think we need to rebuke it strongly. You know, not behind closed doors. We need to publicly rebuke it. One of the few Western leaders who has is President Macron. And I give him credit for that. And I think we need to support him. Whatever differences we have on Brexit or other issues, we need to support any Western leader who speaks out on these issues.